everyone. My name is Hannah. And I'm Rachel. And this is the You Talking to Me podcast. Happy last week of Black History Month, everybody. Today, we have a very special guest. Her name is Anissa. Hi, Anissa. Hi, guys. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Party. <laughs> Anissa is our friend. I don't know how long Rachel and Anissa have known each other, but Anissa and I have known each other since we were around seven or eight years old, and we started dance together. Yeah, and I think I knew of Anissa in, like, the seventh grade in spa. I don't know. You were, like, very familiar when I saw you again when we hung out after Hannah and I became pretty close friends. So you just, like, lived in my brain subconsciously since the seventh grade. <laughs> I mean, that both sound right. Yeah, we definitely met in dance, Hannah, and, like, continued in spa and high school and college. And then, yeah, more toward college. Like, I don't know how we really weren't that close, me and Rachel, because I feel like we were in a lot of the same stuff, but it was more toward college that we got a little closer. We start hanging out, watching movies at Hannah's place, playing games, doing whatever, <laughs> chilling as the young people do. And now here we are doing a podcast together and watching a movie. <laughs> in our old gray days, you know, because we're old and gray now. Just kidding. I'm not gray yet. I hope I don't get my mom's hair jeans and get gray hairs next year in life Oof. because I'm just not prepared for that. We're going to be 25 this year, girl. <laughs> Yeah, all three of us are going to be 25. So are we about to have a quarter life crisis here? Ooh, I hope so. We should <laughs> record it. That has to be a live stream then. Okay, people. Our movie that we are talking about today is Napoli Ever After. It is on Netflix. It is a Netflix original. It is from 2018. And the runtime is an hour and 38 minutes, roughly. I think I will jump right in with a recap of this film. Napoli Ever After tells the story of Violet. Violet is a Black woman who has been told all her life that she needs to be aware of the way she looks and needs to change the things about herself that make her unique to fit into society's standards. At the beginning of the movie, Violet has long, straight hair, and she does everything she can to maintain a quote-unquote perfect appearance. She has been taught to transform herself into what other people want instead of doing what she wants to do. When her boyfriend doesn't propose to her like she thought, she questions her life. She goes out drinking and when she arrives back at her house, she ends up shaving her head. She is now faced with learning how to be confident in who she is without her hair. It takes some time, but Violet learns to be confident in who she is and wants to help other women know just how beautiful they are exactly as they are, no matter what society has been telling them. Well, that's my recap, but I guess I want to know first, Rachel, what was your thoughts? What was? Is that even correct grammar? Hannah, who are you? Rachel, what were your thoughts on this podcast, opinions, things like that. So I watched the trailer first and thought this would be a very good movie, something that I'd like. I remember people talking about it a couple years ago when it came out, but I really enjoyed it for the most part. I think Violet really did have a huge transformation from caring about herself so much and really like not taking in the world around her, the stuff around her, because she's so focused, hyper-focused on one thing, to enjoying life because you don't have to worry about like this one thing. So I thought that was a very fun transformation to see how she was going to get there. This is based off of a book. So I would really like to read the book at some point, I think, to see how it compares. But it had really cool transitions from different hair journeys that she went on throughout the movie. I thought it was very cool to see how hair can have such a huge impact on someone's life. And that literally the chapters were like, you know, straight, blonde, bald, new growth, things like that. And I think each of these sections not only just told about her hair, but told about the thing that was going on at that time in the film, which I thought was very fun to see like how they coincide with each other. Anissa, what did you think? 
I guess my overall thoughts, like I really, really liked the movie overall, but I think it was pretty wild. Like I didn't know where they're going to take it. Like at first I thought I was going to like be able to predict where it was going to go. Like I definitely thought there'd be like a wig phase. Like where was your wig phase, girl? Like anyway, but no, she owned it. Like I just feel like they're very, eh, maybe not lately, but like definitely in the past, there are very few black women that would do that to their hair because growing it back takes years to get it to wherever it was but like anyone that does props to you own that shit it's a lot easier yeah i don't know i thought she had some definite growth through it because she was very like focused on the proposal for most of it like she wasn't even like thinking that her hair was like a factor in the way she was treating people in the life in her workplace or anything or even the dog i noticed the dog has the same name as my dog lola and she was so rude to the dog like girl i like how it ended i like how she became friends with the little girl and helped the little girl grow to like made it less about herself and even though i didn't expect the ending i think it tied up nicely i agree i really love liked like you said the relationship with the daughter so Violet has her current boyfriend at the beginning Clint and they don't work out but while she's like getting ready for the proposal that she thinks is going to happen she goes to this hair salon after her hair gets soaking wet destroyed in her opinion from how she wanted it to look like so she goes last minute to this hair salon where this man is running the place and he has a daughter there who I guess like ruined Violet's hair by giving her I don't even know what it was but it like chemically burned her hair so it was like very short and she had to get a weave then after that but the process then later she grows this relationship with this man and his daughter but even when the two of them like you think they're gonna get together but even when it doesn't work out like partway through the movie and she's like reproposed to Clint or re-engaged to Clint she still is like friends with Zoe who's the daughter and I thought that was the sweetest thing like she didn't just ditch her like she still has this relationship with her invites her to the engagement dinner it was just so cute my thoughts on the movie I liked it overall I thought that it told a good story like Anissa I was not predicting where it was going especially when she gets back with the boyfriend and then, well, I guess then fiance, I had no clue that that was coming. And I was not happy about that. I was like, ew, no, don't get back with him. I was very happy then when they once again broke up with each other because I was like, he's just not right for her. But I was interested too to just watch the hair journey. And I know a lot of people can relate to not necessarily the hair, but for some people it's hair. For some people it's part of your body. For some people it's maybe your eyes or freckles or I don't know, lots of different things that there's one thing people will focus on about themselves and like it's all consuming in their lives. And just to watch someone's journey with realizing that they've been so obsessed with one part of themselves and how it's taken over their lives really. Because Violet says in the movie that she didn't realize how much time she had put into being obsessed with her hair and now she has so much time because she's not constantly thinking about her hair. I definitely agree with you. Like, I don't know. It's it kind of weird when you, like, think back about the movie. It was definitely, like, a roller coaster because it was, like, funny at parts. It was kind of deep at parts. It was heavy, sad, depressing, and then it would be, like, really happy, and then it would be, like, oh, no, it's funny again. But I kind of like movies that do that like take you on a little trip me too and like that are unexpected like we've all been saying literally this whole time that it takes it where you don't think it's going to take it which I think is so important I'm literally reading a screenwriting book that talks about reversals and obstacles and things like that and they the writer both of the book which I'm guessing a lot of this is pretty much based directly off of and the screenwriters really just like took it there and you know reversed it when you didn't think so and oh my gosh I literally was screaming when he was about to propose I was like no or when she got in the shower with him I was like oh please just be like extra breakup sex and leave like please do not get back with him oh but I know that I think we all were rooting for her to get with the other guy which I can't remember his name right now hair salon guy 
Yeah, we were all rooting for her to get with the hair salon guy. I think his name's Will. So. I have no we were... freaking clue what his name is. I know we were all rooting for her to get with Will, but then he, she, like, doesn't at the end. Like, they're kind of, like, partners in the business, like, trying to market her or market his hair products. I know Hannah agrees with me on this part. Like, happy that she didn't end up with him at the end, and it was more about, like, herself. Yeah. I agree with that. I don't know. Yeah, Will gave up, like, big daddy vibes, but I don't think she needs that right now. She needs to, like, make her own way, boss babe. Yeah, it's like, how many freaking movies do we need where a woman ends up with a man because that's gonna fix all her damn problems? No! Yeah, honestly, because she's focused about herself and how she creates herself for a man because her mother has put these thoughts into her head, and she even says it, like, you taught me that I need to change myself for the man. And when she changes herself for her and just keeps doing what she wants, she makes herself, yeah, like more attractive to some of these guys and stuff. But that isn't the ultimate goal, which I'm glad that they really enforce. Like she doesn't even kiss Will at the end because he wants to, you can tell. Like they want to kiss, maybe even she wants to kiss, you know, but she's like, no okay I have to go be somewhere and she like goes takes a stroll and you can just tell there was that moment right after she shaved her head where she's walking through the marketing building like where her job is and she's like kind of inside herself like she's not like hunched over and like curled up or anything while she's walking she still has like a straight posture and everything but you can just tell it's different and then at the end she's like walking so confidently you know some people are looking at her like oh that girl's confident yes and everything but I really liked that part of it and I also this has been a thing that I recently have really like cared about and it's I'm glad that my parents when I was growing up did not really enforce like looks or anything like they made sure I was washing my face so I didn't have you know really terrible skin or acne scars and stuff but I was not told you know like brush your hair make sure it's curled make sure you have this size waist make sure you're whatever you know it really wasn't about looks like they wanted me to be confident in myself and they always made sure I they told me I was beautiful like pretty much no matter what and it was just made me feel really good that I was not someone brought up like Violet was brought up just caring about her appearance for others. I agree with that too. I personally grew up in a family where starting from a very young age, for example, I wanted when I was like one, two, three, I don't know, I wanted to have the same underwear as my brother. And my grandma bought me the exact same underwear because I wanted that Superman underwear because why couldn't I be like my brother? For holidays and stuff, a lot of times I would choose to dress up, but my family made it clear that you didn't have to dress up if you didn't want to. I think if we ever went to church, it was probably probably suggested maybe that you didn't wear like ripped jeans or something and my mom always made it clear that I did not have to wear makeup to look pretty like I was pretty exactly how I was so I can relate to Rachel did you have that same sort of experience Anissa or were you kind of told you had to wear certain things or yeah I guess I definitely I don't know I think I get a little bit of both my mom's definitely came a long way from how she was I guess so I guess she was a little bit closer to like Violet's mom or whatever in the movie but like just in the progression like I feel like we have both kind of found a way to like balance it I guess if that makes sense like I mean obviously the damage was done but like now that I'm older and smarter and like I've done my own research or whatever in life I guess like I know where to stand with it I guess or where where I like with it I kind of I don't know Maybe it would have been a little bit different, but that's just always how her mom raised her. Like, you're supposed to look good in church. Like, for example, like, if I wasn't wearing makeup in church, that was a problem that day. Just, like, really, like, petty, vain things, you know, that she just kind of, like, instills in you. But I know, like, a lot of kids get that, too, and it's just, like, probably a lot even worse. So there's this movie, um, I think this one was made in, like... 2008-2010 and I think it's on Netflix it was either Netflix or Hulu one of those two um but it's called Good Hair by Chris Rock and he pretty much just explains like the whole history on black hair and how far it's came and how it has made so much money from black women um just to get that service done and as you can see in the movie like it's very 
an urgent, important deal to her for most of her life or whatever. And that is why, just because the whole franchise that they have behind it. So I just think the Good Hair movie really explains how Black women used to wear it naturally and then started incorporating it into like the more working class, like white America's hairstyles. That's when the hair presses and relaxers and everything came in and went in even further with the wigs and the weaves and everything. And that's where all the money is now. And people will drop like straight up $3,000 for a good weave if you're in the right place, like in Atlanta. Yeah, down where you're at, they're making money for that hair. And it's kind of funny because actually they get it from India because they all shave their heads, so they grow their hair, like, what is it, until they're 12 or 13 or something like that, and then they have to shave their heads, and then they get married off. So they pretty much get all their hair from there for free, because their religion just doesn't need their hair, and they don't get any money from it, but we make all the money from it, because that's America, I guess. I hate that. (laughs) It's really kind of messed up. Hannah, like, because we don't have video, Hannah's literally, like, gagging off screen here. Like, she cannot handle this information. It's a lot. It's so, like, it's so much. (laughs) It's like, oh my goodness, this is how we got here. All right. But yeah, most weaves, yeah, like, the good, good ones are from there. (laughs) Wild. I did not know that information. The more you know. (laughs) Do most women who wear wigs have a shaved head, or do some women wear it over their hair they'll wear like wig caps or whatever you know like kind of how we do in theater um except they're like a lot thinner and you like glue that to your like scalp so you put like wig glue like all around and then or you can do it that way or you can do like a frontal sew in too or that's where you can get like the braids and then they'll like sew it into your braids I want to know how both of you felt when she was shaving her head because I felt so emotional with her. I was like sweating. My hands were sweaty. I was like, oh my God, girl, she's doing it. She's doing it. And it felt like she was happy about it and scared about it and wasn't sure about it maybe. But I felt a lot of different emotions during that scene. So I want to know what you guys were feeling. I was just thinking about her mom, like, the whole time. I was like, if I did that, my mom saw me after. Oh, no. Prepare my funeral. (laughs) But, like, I I get what they were going for it in the movie. Like, it definitely had to happen for her character, you know, just because of how much trauma it's almost caused her, I guess. Absolutely. I really liked the moment because it didn't feel like a moment in a movie you know what I mean that they were trying to get to it felt very raw the way it was directed with like her kind of like looking into the camera right while she was shaving there was like no cuts almost for that whole section it felt like we were there like (laughs) while she was doing it and it was so intimate just yeah it was all raw motion she's a great actress oh my gosh I need to find the name of this actress she was literally so good all right so the main actress was literally so good her name is Sanaa Lathan and she literally I don't know the whole thing she was beautiful she was believable she literally just like killed it from the beginning to the end I never felt like she was acting I felt like I don't know every movement that she made throughout the movie felt like something she would do like everything was earned throughout this whole movie. I was just blown away. Like we said, there's a lot of unexpected turns to us, but they set up everything in such a way that I was not like, oh no, she would never do that. Yeah, that makes sense. I agree with that completely. And I really love the development of her character and just watching her grow and evolve throughout the film and go through parts that were harder and challenging times because sometimes I think movies can portray someone's life as just like easy or they always have it figured out. And this was her navigating her life, figuring things out. And after the whole big hair shaving scene... (laughs) The next morning, she wakes up with, like, a killer hangover, you can tell. And she goes into the bathroom, and she looks in the mirror and just starts (laughs) screaming. And I was like, yes, we needed this moment because that made it that much more believable because she was drunk when she shaved her head. And sure, she was confident in that moment. But the next morning, she's like, 
oh dear god what have i done and then her mom shows up in like a few minutes after that and her mom passes out when she sees her and i was like yes that is how that mom would react for sure that is my mother (laughs) i would see jill just being like nisa Oh, Lord, I don't even know. But another moment I felt like that she, like, kind of developed at the same time, or that they maybe, like, would have wanted to, like, hide that part, but they, like, didn't, was when she was, like, yelling at that kid for messing up her hair. So I think she just messed up the relaxers that she had in it into, like, a stronger one. And that's what, like, made her hair start coming out in chunks. But she, like, went off on that kid. Like, she was like, you little brat, I'm grateful for that nappy hair. And she was pretty much just being that person that she's heard her whole life. And I feel like she kind of caught herself right after that. She was like, oh, snap. I mean, maybe it wasn't right after that. I think it was, like, when she saw the kid again. It was when, yeah, it was at the the store, right, when she's, like, the kid said something like, you said I, like, look ugly with my nappy hair and stuff like that. And I think hearing it back, what she said to someone, because I don't think she'd have that revolution or revelation if she didn't hear back what she had said to somebody in a moment of anger like i know if any of us were recorded while we were having a moment of anger going off on someone we probably would immediately regret what we said you know what i mean and i think that's the beauty of this movie is that the writing and the acting goes so well hand in hand like you can't tell where the writing you know starts or stops and the acting you know picks up from there it's just they went so well together they fit perfectly I don't know how many actors and actresses they had to go through to find the perfect, like, matches of people because the chemistry reads were great. Ugh. But relationships are not perfect. You know what I mean? Almost no relationship is just, like, we always have a great time with each other. And if you do or if you're not, like, a little annoyed by something, you know what I mean? You either don't know each other very well or, yeah, it's just surface level, like with Clint and Violet at the beginning, he said it felt like a two-year first date. They probably didn't argue, like, ever because they weren't past that, like, honeymoon phase of always, I mean, she wakes up before he does, has her mom, like, straighten her hair so that when she goes back into bed, she looks perfect, in quotes. You know what I mean? Like, that's just sad that she does not want herself to basically be no makeup you know, bedhead, nothing with her wannabe future husband. Like, she was hoping he was going to propose to her. You know what I mean? She does go off on this kid. She has this, like, really rocky relationship with Will at the beginning. Her and her mom are not perfect. I love the imperfectness of all of the relationships throughout this movie. And I think that is especially what drives the film, too. Not just the transformation of hair, but the transformation of relationships and whatnot. That's a good point to, like, make about it. I didn't, like, realize they were kind of doing that in, like, so many different layers, I guess. That's crazy. That's because this movie was so deep. Like, it was so (laughs) well produced that, like, you're not thinking about these things. You know what I mean? That's so good. Do you think the writing style is so good for this movie because it came from books or because it was just, like, a skilled writer? Because the books it comes from is Napoli Ever After is the first book. The second book is Napoli Married, and the third book is Napoli Faithful. So I guess I'd also be curious if they're ever planning on making either of those other movies. I think the writing is both. You know, I don't know how much they took from the books exactly, like in terms of dialogue or whatnot. Definitely the story progression, if they took that from the books, like that was wonderful. Like we said earlier, everything feels earned, everything feels natural, everything feels like it's supposed to and that we're not watching something that was scripted for them. I think these writers, they have to be talented enough to one, pick out stuff from a whole book to make into a one and a half hour movie and make it feel full and that we're not missing out on anything. But I also, they, I just feel like there's credit on both ends because this book was so good, obviously, that it got some recognition and was wanted to make into a movie and that the movie is so well well received i lied there's actually eight books in the series not just three so what yeah it says napoli ever after what i lied to you napoli married napoli faithful napoli in bloom unnapoli in love napoli about us napoli entangled some of those sound 
like they ran out of Napoli puns. Oh, well. No offense to the writer. <laughs> I don't know if that was your decision or not, but... <laughs> that kind of made it seem like uh, Tyler Perry-esque. <laughs> <laughs> I can get that vibe, yeah. Just, like, trying to force the brand still in there. Like, to keep that same name, maybe people will keep buying it. <laughs> yeah, it's like they forget that, you know, Napoli was a pun for happily. You didn't have to use it for all of them. Yeah, does she ever get happily? <laughs> She's never happy again. Like, I don't know. Where did they take this girl in eight books? What is this, Harry Potter? Like, she's already an adult. Like, she's not going through school. What's going on? Maybe there's different people. She's already seems. shaved her head. What more can she do? <laughs> we need to start a book club. All right. Like and subscribe if you want us to start a book club and read all of these books and report back to you. <laughs> It'll take us like eight years, but we'll get there. For real though. <laughs> I just like finished my third book of the year, but only one of them I started within the past three months. The rest of them I started like a year ago. <laughs> oh, dang. Still good. Thank you. Progress is progress. Were there any things that any of you guys didn't like about the movie? I mean, her being mean to that dog, that was pretty rude. I liked that it peed on Clint, though. <laughs> That was like, thank you, Lord, except it got him in the shower and got them momentarily back together. But it's okay because she didn't end up with him in the end and we got that beautiful swimming scene. <gasps> was so I was just going to say, I don't know if I can comment on something I don't like, but two of my favorite moments, well, three. So the shaving the head scene was definitely one of my favorites. Another favorite was the pool scene where they just get in the water. Everyone gets in the water and embraces who they are exactly as they are. And the other scene that I loved is when she comes home after quitting her job and she just starts to dance to the music and she just like moves her body how it feels good to her. And I was like, yes, that's so amazing. No, I agree with all that. Yeah, there weren't really, like, any, like, bad parts, I'd say. Maybe just, like, the parts where you're like, okay, like, where are you going with this, kind of? Like, now, like, you're just, like, eager to, like, see where that's about to go is really all I can think of. Yeah, I don't think I disliked anything. I wasn't complaining about the writing or the directing or the editing or anything. So music choice was super good the whole way through. Oh my gosh, like that music composer and and the person who puts all of this together in the, in the editing room, fantastic. I think my favorite song was actually in the beginning credits or whatever it's called. I can't think of all the words exactly, but one part that stuck out to me was the lyrics. It was something along the lines of, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing, I'm not asking for it. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. Preach it from the mountaintops. There is a part that, I actually didn't like well besides the shower scene just because I was mad at that you know but not like that was bad for me bad yeah and this was another part where I was just like uncomfortable but it doesn't mean it was bad choice for the movie was when Will and Violet are in the garden area and he's like putting oil on her that part was fine but then she's like he's like you can eat it and then she's like show me and he starts dripping oil on her and the way he was like trying to eat oil off of her I was like no 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 I can't I'm uncomfortable (laughs) I guess I did get that yeah the beginning was really like I was like is this gonna be like a porno (laughs) (laughs) Am I ready for this? I don't know, but I'm glad it wasn't all about that. (laughs) Yeah, that definitely, the the oil scene when he was, like, kissing up her neck and stuff, yeah, definitely gave me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. One, because it was in public. Yeah. And two, I just felt like even when he was rubbing the oil on her head, I was like, this is too intimate for me to, like, be part of. Like, I feel like I'm stepping in on something that I'm not supposed to. Gave me weird vibes, but... It was a good scene. I definitely liked that it happened until he was eating it off of her. But it just the whole from beginning to end, that scene felt so intimate. And I'm not usually a person who is like offended by sexual things on TV. But that was just like, I was like, whoa, this is really sexual. <laughs> Even though it wasn't, it was. I don't know how they yeah, did it. Yeah, they were fully clothed. They were in public so you know it's not gonna go too far but it was I think that's why because of the intimacy it feels like you're a peeping tom or something like watching in through the window and like 
on something you really should just have like kept walking whereas like <laughs> some sex scenes and stuff especially in movies just don't feel like there's that connection sometimes and it's just like gratuitous or like that's what I don't like a lot about nudity in films and stuff like that is it feels like oh they're just trying to put boobs on tv or trying to put boobs on screen you know what I mean where this there wasn't any nudity but it was very intimate like it was almost nudity a couple places like you didn't see anything like explicit but every time there was something sexual it felt real and I was like I should close my eyes (laughs) this was rated mature which I found interesting because I didn't feel like it needed to have that rating because isn't that above rated r um i think it might just be a separate rating that netflix or like streaming services can have where or maybe like it played on tv for somewhere i don't know you know what i mean because it didn't play in a movie theater they don't technically have to follow like the r and stuff whereas on tv you have tv 14 which is not a rating at the movies so i wonder if it was just rated mature for like Make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into before you click on this, since it was sent straight to Netflix. Something I'm curious about is, would you guys shave your head ever? I want to know your (laughs) thoughts on that, and then I will tell you my opinion. Never. I I couldn't. I don't know. I've always kind of wanted, like, short hair, but never, like, no, I could not do bald. It's too cold up here, like... I mean, I could wear a hat, but it's, like, maybe if I lived in, like, Cali, like, really make a statement, maybe. I'll leave it at that. (laughs) I used to want a pixie-type cut, like, a really short cut, like my sister has. I mean, Emily's is longer in a lot of places now, but I used to want that, and then I was, like, oh, I'm glad I never did that, I guess. I don't know if I would, I would choose to just out of whim and wanting to or anything. I don't think I would shave my head. Because I like doing things to my hair if I have the option. Like, I'm about to cut my hair coming up. And I'm like, I want it short enough to where it's worth the price. But I don't want it to, like, be too short that I can't do something to it. Like, oh my gosh, I sound so, like, dramatic about it. And it's just hair. You know what I mean? Well, hair is a thing that's important to some people. And some people, it's just, you know, another thing that they can do something with. For me, I think... If we're being honest, of the three of us, I would be the one who would be the most likely to shave their head. (laughs) I have, I mean, technically I've shaved part of my head. I have done an undercut and I literally did it bald. I want to kind of do another undercut because I liked that sometimes. And I have thought about either not necessarily like bald bald shaving my head, but getting like a super short cut. I don't think that I would like it long term, but... I could see myself at some point just doing it to see what I would think of it. I think that if I actually, like, were to shave my hair, it'd be, like, the sides and, you know, like, the top part that's, like, a little longer. You can, like, swoop it. I think that's what I would do with it, not, like, bald, bald like she did. Yeah, I don't think I would do that. I just think I would need more confidence in myself like I I was like I said raised to where I didn't care all the time about what I thought but I still have like opinions and everyone's a little self-conscious about other things about themselves so I think I would just need to really build that confidence in myself to have short enough hair to where my face is like the first thing people see and that's it they're not worried about like oh cute hairstyle or anything you know what I mean and I would have to like be prepared for comments like everyone who knows me obviously knows I've never had hair like that. So just preparing for like your looks to be the first thing that people really like see, even the people that you are really close to and things like that. I think I'd have to be really sure about myself. Yeah, I feel that. Like it's definitely a confidence thing. Like I like definitely applaud anyone that can do it for sure. And I could totally, I could see like doing a little side thing or something. I don't know. I think it's cute when girls do like little sections of it, but I mean, still it's cold, but you're in the warmth now. So you have options. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Like I can go bald and not have to wear a hat if I didn't want to, which is not, I mean, what it's negative 20 where y'all are at right now is, or am I too warm? Is that too warm? Negative 43. Sorry, my bad. Oopsie. (laughs) try doubling that (laughs) where it's like 50 here today maybe it's been rainy it's been rainy oh it's so cold and dreary we are gonna come see you please see all of georgia 
go up there for like two weeks or something. I also want to know what you guys would rate this movie. Let's do out of five. Like five would be, it was amazing. You would say it's one of your favorite movies. You would watch it again and again and again. I don't know if we would give a movie a zero unless, you know, you couldn't make it through. Like there's a movie we were going to do for the podcast, spoiler, but Rachel couldn't watch it. And then there was one that we were going to do after that and I couldn't watch it. So those would get (laughs) zeros. What would you guys rate it? Probably, I wouldn't give it a five just because I don't think it's like my favorite movie that I'd watch over and over and over again. But I'd give it like between 4.5 and a five because it is very well done just all the way around but based on our criteria that we created I think not a five but like a 4.7 I feel like yeah I'm probably pretty similar probably like a four like I don't know if I'd watch it again like by myself but if I like was with someone like I thought would really like it like also like I'd watch it again with them I guess like I'd show my mom or I don't know maybe there's girlfriends coming up maybe she wants to watch it I don't know (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I really think that this is, I'm the type of person that doesn't really want to rewatch movies almost ever anyway, because I hate like knowing what's going to happen next, unless it's super complicated and intricate where there's like things that you have to watch and look out for the second time. So I'm not like a rewatcher anyway. So maybe that like affects my score, but I still think I was pretty fair. What about you, Hannah? I think I would rate it a four and a half or 4.7, just like Rachel. I am a type that will rewatch a movie if I like it and I have written down in my notes, would watch again. Like, I definitely think I would watch this again, but I can't give it a five because that would have to stay for my, like, absolute favorite movie. If I'm ever wanting to watch a movie, I would watch that movie. And to be honest... I can't even think of what that movie would be. (laughs) Oh, let me tell you what my absolute favorite movies are. Paddington 1 and 2. And before you laugh, (laughs) Hannah, I saw that. (laughs) They are the most beautiful movies, for one. They're basically all real people in the movie and then an animated bear that just causes trouble. But the animation is so good. You believe that this bear is real the whole time. The actors are so good. Like, it's amazing. Love it. Please go watch it. (laughs) Paddington. (laughs) Actually, one time, I think in September, so this is like foreshadowing people i think in september rachel and i are going to give you a little sneak peek of what our favorite movie is we'll each review our favorite movie because in september it's our birthday month and so we i think are each going to review our favorite movies so that gives me some time to think about which movie i would choose (laughs) there might be there might be new movies out by then so not a chance (laughs) and our opinions are going to be changing probably because that's just how life is does anyone else have anything they want to say wrap up about the movie i think i'm good um it's a good watch though the last thing i want to add is that i am i mean if you've gotten an idea over previous podcasts from listening i'm not a person who sits still very well and for me to be able to watch an entire movie in one setting and to feel like it went by quickly is a very good thing and this movie to me went by quickly so i will say that if you are a person who struggles to sit still and watch a movie watch this movie it's very good (laughs) and even if for some reason like you do have to watch it in chunks it breaks it up with like these really pretty placement cards or whatever that separate the different sections you know when she goes blonde or new growth and things like that it does pop that up and it's like act breaks almost but like unconventionally in a film because usually films are like three acts or whatever so I really liked that aspect so if you do for some reason like have to go back to work or something like I did when I was watching part of the film that those are great places to stop it and it doesn't feel like you know you're stopping in the middle of action all right with that everybody you know make sure you like and subscribe to us on YouTube follow us on any podcast app review us on Apple Podcasts so that we can get to the you know, homepage, let other people who have not heard of us hear about us. We'd love to grow that audience and get more people on the You Talking to Me train. I just made that up right now. So sorry. I will see myself out. (laughs) Um, 
Follow us on Instagram at youtalkingtome.podcast. Hannah's dying. I'm trying to say this without laughing now. Oh my God. I'm literally going to go just end everything. Email us suggestions at youtalkingtomepodcast at gmail.com or comment below if you're watching on YouTube. We do read all of these and take it into consideration. We do record a lot of stuff ahead of time, so it might take a couple of weeks, but we will get onto that feedback and take it into consideration. We also are on Twitter at youtalkingtome11. Again, anybody who knows how to switch your Twitter handle, tell me. That's just the one that auto-generated. Don't know where the 11 came from. Doesn't mean anything. Uh, Maybe on our 11th episode, we'll have a fun little (laughs) thing. This might be our 11th episode, actually. Because we're both number one, obviously. One and one is 11. Uh. (laughs) Frick yeah. Okay, never mind. We're going to keep it. And that's why we are 11. All right. Thank you, Hannah. All right. If you have any critiques, comments, you know, let us know. Be be nice. We're from the Midwest. We don't understand meanness. So we want to thank you, Anissa, for being our guest today. Yes. Yes, thank Thank you, Anissa. Oops, yes, sorry. Thank, you, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, it's been a fun time. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Please come back. We'll invite you when we do our book club. <laughs> yes, I'll come back for anything. Love chatting. We definitely appreciate having you on, Anissa. And I don't know, audience, have you noticed that now our last two episodes we've had guests on? What do you think of that? Do you like when we have guests on? Do you like when we mix it up so that it's not just Rachel and I talking? You know, you get someone else's point of view. Let us know. Also, just a reminder, if you are listening on YouTube and you subscribe to the channel, please also hit the notification bell so you get notified when we post because that is important, people. I think that that is all that we have for today's podcast. So I guess first we can say that was Anissa, who we appreciate so much having on. Once again, thank you. And we'll make sure her Instagram handle or her social media handles are in the description box below. Mm -hmm. My name is Hannah. And I'm Rachel. And this was the You Talking to Me podcast. Bye.